During the pandemic, my husband and I moved 2,800 kilometers across the country, bought a house, remodeled the house, and then I hit the wall. My sponge was full. I went through so much change that I became dysfunctional, not remembering things, feeling overwhelmed, and unable to perform at my highest and best level. Have you ever had a sponge situation like that? My former boss, Daryl Connor, came up with the sponge metaphor. He explained that just like a sponge could only absorb so much until it was full, we have an internal sponge that can only absorb so much change until it gets saturated. Then it's time to squeeze the sponge. The amount of personal, professional, and life change that we all must absorb is soaring. Many people have exceeded their mental and emotional capacity for change. They're exhausted from their effort to distinguish which change is most important and find clear direction in the overwhelming volume of so much change. Change saturation is dangerous because it results in stress-related life fractures and creates billions of dollars of lost productivity in the workplace. Symptoms of change saturation range from personal impacts, such as fatigue and burnout, to organizational impacts like failed projects and tragic accidents. Change saturation can be measured and managed. Here are three things you can do to manage your sponge. Inventory, evaluate, and decide. Let's look at each of these actions that you can use today to address saturation. First, inventory. Make a list of all changes in your life, personally and professionally. This includes everything from a new baby, a new home, or a new job, to the change in your schedule due to school or even a loss of a loved one. Think about all that's happening at work. What are the changes? Different people and different roles, new systems and processes, new branding, new tasks to accomplish. You have one life, not just a personal life and a professional life and a volunteer life, one life. So make sure that your inventory encompasses all aspects of your life. Your inventory may also include things happening in the world around you. Nothing is too small to include in your inventory. Second, evaluate. For this action, consider your capacity for change. Evaluate the mental, emotional, spiritual, and physical resources you have. Honestly assess your habits, your energy, your time, and determine your capacity for change. Another way to think about this is your sponge space. How much of it do you have? You may have more than you realize once you take time to reflect on it. Number three, decide. How will you apply your resources against the demands of your change inventory? Recognize that you have a choice. How you'll spend your time, energy, and attention, you get to choose. Perhaps you need to decide to reduce time commitments or improve your habits to increase your capacity. Remember how I hit the point of saturation between moving, kicking off a new business line, and settling into a new life? When I took these actions, it gave me a sense of agency over the things I could control. I inventoried all the change, evaluated where I was, and made some decisions. I put pause on some house projects, got a health coach to improve my eating, and added Pilates to my routine. This gave me more capacity. As a result, the saturation levels dissipated and I was able to move from anxious dysfunction to new levels of peace and performance. Organizationally, this is the same process that needs applied regularly. As a leader, it's critical to monitor and measure the change capacity in your team and your organization. If you don't pay attention to the degree of change saturation, you risk wasting valuable resources. Every team member has different levels of sponge space available to absorb and adopt the changes happening in the workplace. Just because you have a lot of sponge space doesn't mean others are equally open to change. We once worked on a project where we analyzed all the changes happening from every function within the business. We documented HR changes, like some new performance criteria, updated benefits information, and a change to the payroll system. We captured the IT changes. There were updates to the tools that customer service agents were using, which by the way, required some more training hours. And we captured the changes to the products they were supporting, which meant they needed even more training. 
we went to talk with the VP of Operations about all the changes impacting her thousand person customer service team. She was shocked to realize that there were three significant changes happening right in the middle of busy season. Needless to say, this information was a revelation and we worked with her through three options. Option one was to eliminate change. For most of the changes on the list, they were being implemented at an organizational level and she didn't have the ability to stop them. However, she could deploy the second option, which is to reorder changes. Once you see that the change is going to overwhelm capacity, you can reorder the implementation timing so that there is sufficient capacity to be successful. The last option requires intentionality to increase resilience or your sponge space. More space makes more capacity for successful change. There are a lot of great resources we'd love to share with you. So subscribe to this channel. Examples of resilience building strategies include gratitude, mindfulness, journaling, exercise, and acts of kindness. The leader did not apply this strategy but many leaders we've worked with have had us deliver an educational session to the organization, which educated them on the basic concepts of change. That's followed with a resilience building challenge that helps to prepare them for the coming changes with the organization. The operational VP, armed with the information about the upcoming changes, used the second option we talked about above. She negotiated with the other areas implementing changes to move the timelines so that her team could focus on serving their customers during the busiest time of the year. Over the last few decades of working with leaders, I've observed that their change capacity is significantly higher than the organizational employees. In fact, one Fortune 100 company we worked with was implementing a major change and struggling with an apparent lack of enthusiasm for it within their employees. We were talking with the senior leadership team and one of the members commented about the difference in capacity by saying, it's like we're asking couch potatoes to run a marathon. We need a slow start to get them into shape. Maybe let's start with a 5K walk to get them to start moving. The leader was contrasting the capacity of the employees who had experienced very little change with the titanic level transformation they were about to unleash. If you thrive on massive amounts of change and even create more change than your organization can handle, then you are definitely a leader. And it's essential that you're aware of organizational capacity. If you don't recognize saturation and squeeze out the sponge, you risk the results you want to achieve with the changes you are implementing. Download the Change Leader Toolkit to create a personal plan that addresses change capacity. Build on your brilliance and increase your leadership confidence and effectiveness. Bright on with Brighton Leadership.